Hi boys and girls, I hope you had a great week this week. Um, we had a great week. We've enjoyed the sunshine, which is very, has been very nice. Um, I hope you've been able to at least get out, take a walk, maybe ride your bike, your scooter, whatever. I hope you've been able to do that, enjoy a little bit of sunshine and the outside and some fresh air. I encourage you to do that. I hope you've been good for mom and dad. Um, let's start with our verse, John 17, 17. I've had a few of you already say it and a few of you have already gotten your prizes. So keep practicing it. Um, and if you can say it again when we meet, say it then. Um, and I want to encourage you on Wednesdays, we have patch clubs. So if you're interested, um, let me know and we'll get you um, our Zoom meeting uh, ID and um, for those of you who already been faithful to it, continue to be, be faithful to it. We've been having a good time with it. Okay, so let's turn to John 17, 17. Let's say it twice. Uh, ready, begin. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. One more time. John 17, 17. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. We're going to talk a little bit about God's word today in our lesson. But before we do that, I have a few things to show you. Um, I guess a little bit of a game. You can shout it out if you know what it is. I'm going to show you a few things. If you know it, you can say it. If not, just keep your mouth shut. So if you can see this, there's this. You guys see it? Okay. And here, we'll set this right here. I have this. Y'all know what this is. And I have this. Okay. So I have this. And that. This. And one more thing. I have this. Okay, you guys all see that? Now, how many of you saw it but did not know what it was or did not recognize what it was? I think there's probably a few of you that do not know what these are. So, let me enlighten you. This is just for the diaper genie. There's bags in it that you can put for stinky diapers. This is for a diaper genie, okay? They're refills, refill bags. This is to clean windows with. It's a squeegee and you clean the windows with it, or, or glass, okay? This is a drill bit, a 3 16th inch drill bit. I think the next thing I pulled out was this. This is actually a pedal for our piano here at the church, for the keyboard here at the church. This is the pedal. Push down on it. Um, this is for the boom mic that you can put on. It helps attach and you can move the mic around. And this is just a plug for your sink to hold water down to keep it from draining. That's all it is. So you guys were able to see those things but you didn't recognize it. Now that you know, now you'll recognize it next time you see it. Um, and that goes along, this is going to go along with our lesson today and um, if you can see this white piece of paper, I've written something on it. It's blank, isn't it? To you, it looks blank, but I've written something on it. Do you believe me or not? Well, we'll see. We'll see. For those of you who believe me or not, there's something on here, even though you may not see it. Okay? So, this leads us to our lesson for, um, for today. It's... We're, remember we talked about Jesus' crucifixion and then we talked about Jesus' um, resurrection. And now we see that Jesus has appeared to Mary um, Magdalene and he's appeared to um, some of the disciples. And we've come to um, later on this Easter afternoon, okay? So if you have your Bibles, turn to Luke 24, Luke chapter 24, verse 13. We're going to start with. Luke chapter 24, verse 13, okay? And before I do that, I'm gonna, I want you to listen for some, this first part, listen for some names and some places. Uh, we're gonna talk about Cleopas and Emmaus, okay? Those two, 
Cleopas is a person, Emmaus is a place. So listen for that as we read here. Um, Luke chapter 24, verse 13, it says, And behold, two of them went the same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem about three score furlongs. So that's about seven miles away from Jerusalem, okay? And they talked together of all these things which had happened. They're talking about Jesus when he died on the cross and how he rose from the grave. Um, and But, you know, they, that's what they've heard, but they have also are thinking that Jesus was taken from the tomb and they don't know where his body is. Okay, so verse 15. And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holden that they should not know him. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another, as ye walk and are sad? And one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering said unto him, Art thou, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, and hast not known the things which are come to pass there in these days? And he said unto them, What things? And they said unto him, Concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. Okay? So here we are talking about Cleopas. They are going home to their, their village in Emmaus. Okay? And they're walking. He is, um, the Bible tells us it's Cleopas, and it's probably his wife. Um, the Bible tells us that his wife is um, the sister of Mary, the mother of Jesus, and who had, who had been at the cross with Mary uh, when Jesus was crucified. So here they're walking, and they were sad. Their hopes were down. Um, they saw that Jesus died. They, they had heard that he would rise from the grave. They saw him buried in the tomb. But at this point, they're just thinking that his body was missing. You know, they hadn't seen him at this point. So they were sad and they were heartbroken and their hope was gone. Um, and so as they're walking, talking about these things, Jesus appears to them, but they don't know it's Jesus. They didn't recognize him. Just like I told you, I showed you these, all these objects that we had here, like the, um, the plug for the sink. Um, I showed you these objects. You could see them, but you didn't recognize what they were, huh? Well, it was the same for, the, for Cleopas and his wife, where they saw Jesus, but they didn't know him. They just knew him as a stranger. Because they were talking about what was happening and what had happened. And Jesus came and said, what are you talking about? And they said, are you a stranger? How You must be the only person that doesn't know what has just happened. Um, and they said terrible things have happened. And Jesus is asking. Of course, Jesus knows. But he wants them to. He is asking them maybe to help them realize who he was. But he's asking them, well, what things? And they say, well, the things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet. He worked unbelievable miracles. He was a teacher. Um, he was, he was um, thought very highly by God and by man. And the chief priests and the religious leaders, they arrested him. And they, they punished him as if he was a criminal, even though he was not. The, the Roman government condemned him to death. And they gave him the worst punishment possible, is dying on the cross. They crucified him. And um, they were saying, but we had hoped, like the prophets had said, we had hoped that he was our Messiah. That he had come to um, to rescue us, to free us, and um, they said that this happened three days ago, and the women at, it, the women had said that the tomb was empty, and now we don't know where his body is, and and you know some have said they've seen Jesus, and some have said they haven't seen him, so we don't know what to think, and of course Jesus at this point is saying, well that's foolish to say. Um, you know, they're not believing what the prophets had to say as far as Jesus dying on the cross and raising from the grave in three days. And the scriptures say that, and they weren't believing the scriptures. And that goes back to our sanctifying through thy truth, thy word is truth. And Jesus is saying, thy word, my word, the Bible is true. And these people, along with others who didn't believe in what the prophets were saying, weren't believing in God's truth, weren't believing the scripture. So, as they're journeying, they get closer to Emmaus, their hometown, and Jesus was going to continue on, but they told him, 
Um, remember, they're thinking he's just a stranger, and they said, it's late, just come home with us and have supper with us, okay? And so what Jesus does is he does go with them and has supper with Cleopas and his wife. And as they're sitting there for supper, they ask Jesus to thank um, the Lord for the food. They, they asked him, um, you know, please bless the food that we're about to eat. And so Jesus did just that. He took the bread, he broke it into pieces and passed it to them. And when that happened, it was like a light bulb, light bulb moment. Jesus had opened their eyes and they realized that this was Jesus. He was their risen Lord. Um, and can you imagine how their heartbrokenness and their hopelessness that probably, um, or I know, disappeared. Their sadness disappeared because they saw that Jesus truly was risen from the grave. So, of course, they were amazed. They were astounded. And the Bible tells us that after they had seen him, that Jesus had vanished. The Bible tells us that. And, of course, what do you think Cleopas and his wife did? Well, they didn't stick around. They immediately got up and ran back the seven miles to Jerusalem to tell the disciples the wonderful news about Jesus, that they had seen him. And so they ran back all the way to Jerusalem and found the disciples and said, quick, quick, let us tell you some wonderful news. So they hurried up the stairs and they could hardly contain themselves and they said of course the exciting news that the Lord had risen. He had appeared to Peter, the Bible tells us. And so the couple from Emmaus told the story how Jesus um, had appeared to them as they were walking down the road, that they didn't recognize him, but they did when he began to, after he prayed and, and began to break bread, that they realized this was Jesus, our risen Savior. So everyone was so thankful and of course excited of this proof that Jesus was alive. And um, so that, that same evening as they were discussing this, disciples and, and the couple, they were together in a room and of course in this room, they had locked the doors and the windows because they were still afraid of what the Jewish leaders might do to them. Because, you know, they're thinking that Jesus' body is, um, is maybe they think, Remember, if you remember, they said, tell people that, you, that the disciples told Jesus, stole Jesus' body, but they didn't, did they? Um, so, but of course, the disciples was, were still afraid of the Jewish leaders, so they were up in this room, in the upper room, with the doors locked and the windows locked. Um, but as they were talking excitedly with Emmaus, or with, excuse me, with Cleopas and his wife, that as they were doing that, Jesus himself appeared. He was standing there among the disciples and, and uh, Cleopas. But instead of being super excited, instead, even though they were excitedly talking about it, when they actually saw Jesus, they were afraid. They got frightened. And their hearts, the Bible tells us, their hearts were suddenly filled with fear. They thought they saw a ghost. Even though they knew what the scripture said, even though Cleopas and his wife had come back from Emmaus to say, we see Jesus, even though Mary Magdalene had, had seen Jesus and had told them, they still didn't truly believe it. And they were frightened and they thought they saw a ghost. And Jesus said, showed them, no, look at my, look at my hands. And if, if you can see closely, you'll see the nail scarred hands that Jesus had. If you remember when they nailed him to the cross. And they said, look, you can touch my hand. You can feel the bones in my skin. Ghosts don't do that. And, um, and he's telling them, you know, you can see the wounds on my hands and my feet. And of course, they were probably still doubting, but maybe starting to get excited at this point. And Jesus, what he says, he asked, he said, um, do you have anything that I can eat? And so he sat down, they gave him some fish and some bread, and he ate it. And the disciples just watched him, and they thought, well, ghosts can't eat that. And ghosts don't have, you can't feel their hands and bones and skin. You can't, you are not able to do that. And as 
during this, Jesus also gave him the same study that he had given um, Cleopas and his wife. Um, as far as the prophets. Do you remember what the prophet said? The same thing that he told them. He started giving the disciples. Do you remember what the prophet said? What they had prophesied that, that your Savior will come and he will die on the cross and he will be buried for three days, but he will rise again. Don't you remember that? Do you remember the scriptures explain that very carefully? That I must suffer and die and rise from the dead on the third day and that these prophecies will come to pass. And at that time, Jesus opened their eyes and his death and his resurrection. Uh, they realized, oh, this is Bible prophecy. So not only had the tomb been opened, but their eyes were opened so that they knew him. And it's, that's what we're talking about here. Is sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. What we need to do, boys and girls, is um, when we're talking about, as we're talking about Jesus opening the eyes of his disciples and, and his followers, that when we open God's word, when we open his word, we need to ask God to open our eyes. Open our eyes to what he wants us to learn. Um, if we don't do that, how how are we going to understand what he wants us to do or how we should live our lives or what is the right path? And so as you pray and as you read his word and as we um, as you go to church and listen to your Bible stories and lessons, ask God to open your eyes so that you can understand what he would want you to do, what he would want you to learn. Um, and you'd be surprised um, how wonderful the things that you'll learn, how, um, the marvelous um, things that he um, has for you. And so, as we continue on that Sunday evening when Jesus appears to his di disciples, a man, one of his disciples named Thomas, let me turn this around again, Thomas, he's also, named, he's also known as Didymus. So if you can remember that, it's easier for you to remember Didymus because it's such a strange name. Remember that. Remember that name, so we're not like Didymus, okay? And so, Thomas wasn't there, and the disciples had told Thomas, um, Jesus is alive. He has appeared to us. Um, he is alive indeed. The scriptures, that the prophets, prophecies that were said, the scriptures have been fulfilled. He's alive. Well, Thomas, Didymus, like I said, he doubted. So we, you, if you can remember, doubting Didymus. Don't be like doubting Didymus, okay? And Thomas doubted, even after what the disciples said, and even after uh, trying to explain how the scriptures have been fulfilled, even after that, Thomas said, nope, I'm not going to believe. I'm still doubting that. Only if I see um, his nail wounds in his hands, and if only if I can put my fingers and feel it. If I can feel the... Um, the, his side, if you remember when the soldiers had thrust um, a sword in his side uh, to, when he, to make sure he was dead. If I can feel that, then I'll believe. So eight days later, the disciples, they were gathered again in the same place, and Thomas was with them this time. And suddenly, just like before, Jesus stood in their midst and greeted them. Well, you can imagine what a shock it was to Thomas. He probably had one of those um, surprise looks, you know? And um, he was probably at the same time ashamed for doubting, for doubting the scriptures, for doubting the disciples, and doubting that Jesus could actually be alive. And um, Jesus showed Thomas his hands, his nail scarred hands, his nail scarred feet. He showed him his side. He said, Thomas, go ahead, put your finger there, feel it. But Thomas didn't want to touch Jesus' wounds. There was no need because he knew that this was indeed his risen Lord, his risen Christ. So he fell humbly at Jesus' feet and cried, My Lord and my God. So not only did Thomas confess that Jesus as a Savior, he made him Lord of his life. And that got, that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to give our lives to him. You know, he's, he's made a way and he's paid such a terrible price um, for us. And he wants, um, he wants us to give our lives to him. 
Um, he's bought us with a terrible price. Um, and our lives are nothing, but we at least owe him that. And when we do that, boys and girls, he can control our lives into what is better for us, into what he wants for us. Um, so what it needs to be is we need to actually be like Thomas. We don't want to be the doubting Thomas, the doubting Didymus. We need to be the believing Thomas where he says, My Lord and my God, where he has surrendered his life to his Lord and he wants God to control him. And Jesus did tell Thomas, You believe because you've seen me. But the Bible tells us that blessed are those who haven't seen me and believe anyway. So Jesus was thinking of all those who would hear of him down through the years and believe on him without seeing him. He said, blessed, blessed will they be. So let me turn this around one more time. John 20 verse 29 says, Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Well, boys and girls, if, if you are a Christian today, that is you and me. We are those that we have not seen Jesus, but we do believe in him. Um, there are things in this life that we know, um, that we put faith in, that we know that only God can do, even though we can't see it. You know, um, the way we live our lives should also show that to others that they believe in Jesus Christ. Even though we can't see him, we believe in him. Believe here, it, the definition is to expect or hope with confidence. In other words, no one, you've got so much confidence, no one can deter you the fact that Jesus is alive. We need to believe. The Bible says in John 20, 31, But these are written, that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that ye believing might have life through his name. And boys and girls, it tells us um, it tells us in the Bible that if you believe in Him, that you're blessed. So continue to do so. But if you don't believe in Him, you can do it right now. Right now, God wants you to believe that He is the person that has paid the price for our sin by dying on the cross. That He was buried, yet He rose again, and He lives for you and for me. And Boys and girls, if you don't believe, please take the time now to, to read. I encourage you, read John 3, 16. Read that. Read right here, John verse 20, 31, okay? Now, if, I, if you remember, I showed you this piece of paper that was blank, and I asked you, do you believe that I have written something on here? Well, for those of you who have believed, let's see if... Let's see if it was something worth believing in, okay? I don't know if it's dark enough. Let me get it dark enough. Trying to get it darker here. You can slightly see some words that I will quickly write over. The word believe is on here. It was written in white, but the word believe was on our white piece of paper. So sometimes we can't see it, but you just need to believe like we did like we do in God's Word, we just need to believe that Jesus is alive. And we know that through our lives, through what God has done for us. But more importantly, we just need to trust His Word. Okay? So let's pray, boys and girls. Let's pray that we can not be a doubting Didymus, but we can be a believing Thomas. Lord, thank you for this lesson. Thank you for appearing before the disciples and your followers um, and even appearing before um, uh, someone who doubted you to show that you are alive. Thank you for being alive, for being um, one that we can put our faith in and know that, um, that you live today, for the miracle of that. 
We love you, Lord. I pray for anyone who does not believe, whether it's um, um, boys and girls, moms and dads, God, that they would trust in you, that they would pay, put their faith in you, um, and that they would be saved. And for those of us who are saved, God, that we would still continue to put faith in you as far as just putting our trust in you in our day-to-day -day life, um, in things, whether things are going good or things are going bad, that we would continue to believe that you are um, you um, are the provider for our needs and that also God that you would open our eyes that we would trust the fact that you would open our eyes to our to your word we love you Lord thank you for this lesson and for this time in Jesus name amen